I'm Representative Leslie Combs. And I'm Senator Ray Jones. And this, this is your Panther, Panther Power, Power Hour. Hour. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Molly Bates. And I'm Lucas Taylor. Thank you for joining us on the Pike TV Panther Power Hour, where you can tune in to catch up on your latest Pikeville Panther news. January is School Board Recognition Month in Kentucky. We would like to extend a big thank you to our district leaders, Mr. Buddy Bueller, Ms. Ann Carty, Ms. Teresa Combs, Dr. Mark Myers, and Mr. Greg Tackett. The 59th annual Total Pharmacy Care Pikeville Invitational Tournament was held at PHS on December 28th through the 30th. The boys' basketball Panthers defeated Beechwood, Greenup County, and in an exciting game against Hazard, the Panthers took the championship. Jared Tackett was named MVP, and Ethan Rowe, Jake Hamilton, and Will Branham were named to the all-tournament team. Congratulations to our basketball Panthers. A big congratulations to Miss Lindsay Eisner, who scored her 1,000th point against Henry Clay at Dunbar High School on December 20th. She was only one of 10 PHS basketball players to be inducted into the 1,000 point club. Congratulations, Lindsay Eisner. We would like to honor Nick Jones for winning the All-A Classic Scholarship. Nick applied in late December and was selected to interview in front of a panel of five judges. Nick was notified that he won the $1,000 scholarship that can be used at any Kentucky school. Congratulations, Nick, on this amazing achievement. PHS junior Madison Tackett auditioned and got the role of Elle Woods in the Mountain Arts Center production of Legally Blonde. Performances will begin this March. Congratulations, Madison Tackett. Last month, senior Will Boyd signed a letter of intent to golf for the University of Pikeville. Congratulations to Will on this great achievement. Pikeville High School senior Samuel Potter recently achieved something that less than 1% of all students across the nation achieve. Sam scored a perfect 36 on the ACT. The ACT test assesses high school students' general educational development and their ability to complete college-level work. Also, senior Mary Hillwig was recently announced as a semifinalist for the 2012 National Merit Scholarship Program. Congratulations to the outstanding students of Pikeville High School. Congratulations to Randy Maynard and Zach Berge Van Hoos for being invited to play in the Border Bowl. This consists of the most outstanding football players from the states of Kentucky and Tennessee. The players compete in a game to show off their skills. This is a very prestigious event and quite a big honor for our Panther athletes. Upon arrival to the Border Bowl, the players receive the All-Star Treatment. Each player receives a personalized jersey, food, and lodging for the entire time at camp. They also received insurance for all activities, a sweatsuit, t-shirts, a Border Bowl ring, and the opportunity to meet numerous former NFL, CFL, and NCAA coaches. Now we'll take you to Devin Clevenger and Austin Burke to hear more about Randy and Zach's experience. So guys, tell me about how you started playing football. It was about, what, first, second grade? Yeah, something like that. We started playing some flag football, then gradually we just moved up from flag to little league to junior high to high school, hopefully to the college level next year. Yeah. Now getting selected to the Border Bowl is a big deal. Tell me how someone prepares themselves for something like this. Just practicing and practicing and practicing. Just looking forward to actually working hard and busting your butt, and hopefully it finally pays off getting selected into it. And I guess that's pretty much how. <laughs> uh, yeah. No. So, who was the person that inspired you the most to start playing football? Probably my dad, I guess, because he's the one who kind of started me out into the flag football. And well, he played his whole life, I guess. He kind of made me just want to be like him and play. It was my dad too. He pushed me from the time I was six years old to play football. And I mean, I hated it when I was eight, nine, ten years old. I hated it with everything in me, but he made me play, made me stick it out, and now I love it. Have you guys had any scouts looking at you as college athletes? Yeah, I've had a couple. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I've had about two or three smaller schools come talk to me. So, do you guys have any idea where you want to go to college? Uh, right now it's looking like UK and that's really, really where I want to go and hopefully I'll figure out about one to two weeks for sure. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think football will play a big part in your college lives? Definitely. Hopefully, definitely, yeah. 
So uh, both of you got border bowl rings. Um, so what else did the border bowl provide for you? <laughs> Ton of stuff. T-shirts. Got about three T-shirts, some sweatpants, sweatshirt. Nice ring. Toboggan. You got to keep your jersey. Got a frisbee. Awesome little bottle. <laughs> <laughs> What's the greatest memory you guys have from the border bowl? I'd have to say just being in that environment and getting to meet all those people. You'd be surprised how much skills really out there. And I mean, people are actually just pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, just it's ridiculous the skill level that's in State Kentucky. Like, I thought I was a good football player, then I went down there and it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what did the Border Bowl teach you? I didn't really teach you much. It's <clears throat> pretty much kind of just they knew everybody could play, and they just threw plays at you and made you kind of just remember them because they knew everybody was going to do it right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's an all-star game. Everybody knows what they're doing. They just tell you what to do. That's about it. Do you have any advice for any upcoming football players? Lift. <laughs> Get in the weight room. Yeah. Don't um, cheat yourself in any sprints. Practice like you would play a game and lift, definitely. And have fun. Yeah. I mean, it's That's not going to be here forever. Fun. You miss it when it's gone. Trust me. Well, um, thank you guys for letting us interview you, and uh, good luck with your future football careers. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. On December 11th, Mr. and Miss Ralph King received an early Christmas present when their daughter, Riley Bett, was born. A special congratulations to Miss Rebecca King. Also, congratulations to another teacher here at PHS, Mr. Adam Collins. Huxton Dane Collins was born on December 30th. Amber Cantrell, a teacher at Pikeville Elementary School, also received a bundle of joy on December 29th when her daughter Annabelle Cantrell was born. Congratulations to these Pikeville Independent teachers. The PHS Show Choir is revving up for its new show. Quite different from its winter presentation, this tour is a Disney spectacular which consists of skits and songs from all of your favorite Disney movies. The cast will perform on February 16th, 17th, and 18th. Aside from the show choir, the PHS Choir and Band will also go on separate tours to perform selected works, showcasing their talents to the elementary audience as well. Recently, the PHS Pride Club, led by Miss Kelly Scott, was recognized for their efforts to protect the environment by recycling. This was the first event to celebrate the nationally recognized America Recycles Day, and it was a wonderful success. America Recycles Day is sponsored by Keep America Beautiful. College Sweatshirt Day was held on Tuesday, December 13th. This event took place to celebrate the fact that 100% of the senior class has now applied to a college. Seniors wore sweatshirts that support the schools that they plan to attend or just to support the college sports teams that the students like. According to Ms. Ann Sammons, the purpose of College Sweatshirt Day was not only to celebrate the fact that 100% of the senior class has applied to a college, but to promote college awareness among all PHS students grades 7 to 12. In planning for this event, Ms. Salmon spoke with Ms. Molly Bates, president of the senior class, and other members of the student body to gain feedback and student opinion. The event was advertised on our Panther Power Hour news show, the Panther Radio segment, and through Facebook and other social networking sites. After much planning and advertising, College Sweatshirt Day finally arrived and all of the seniors showed up supporting their college gear. The day was a huge success. We have entered the second semester of the year, which means that all of our PHS seniors have a lot on their plate. For any senior parents, here's what you need to know. On Wednesday, January 18th, a senior parent meeting will be held in the Commons area at 5.30 p.m. On Thursday, January 19th, the Cap and Gown Company will be here at Pikeville High School from 12 to 5. Parents can stop by to purchase cap and gowns, senior sweatshirts, and other merchandise. Also, junior and senior class rings will be available for purchase. On January 31st, PHS seniors will take the cap and gown picture for the Appalachian News Express. The sitting fee for this is $15. On February 10th, every senior must turn in six pictures for the slideshow that will be presented during the graduation ceremony. On April 13th, pictures for the individual senior pages in the yearbook are due. Money for these senior pages are due as soon as possible. Contact Ms. Susan Huffman for more information about senior events and deadlines. In other news, the elementary drama and chorus departments presented the play A Christmas Carol. There were two showings of the production on Thursday, December 8th, and Friday, December 9th. Admission to this production was free, and the show was a huge success. Pikeville Elementary student Alexis Stanley has a passion for cheerleading, and it shows. Alexis was recently featured in The Cheerleader, a national cheerleading magazine. 
Alexis was one of only six cheerleaders nominated for National Cheerleader of the Year. Congratulations, Alexis. Another elementary student, Evan Rhodes, was selected to participate as FRYSC of Kentucky's Legislative Page Day on February 1st, 2012. This is the third year a student from Pikeville Elementary School has been chosen. In other elementary school news, fifth graders Keith Mullins and Logan Blackburn were recently awarded the Arrow of Light Award by the Boy Scouts of America. This is the highest award that can be achieved by a Cub Scout. To earn this prestigious award, Mullins and Blackburn had to progress from rank to rank, learning new skills as they progressed. Pikeville Elementary School sixth grader Bryce Williams shook off some early jitters and then rallied to win the Big Blue Madness free throw contest at Rupp Arena in front of more than 20,000 rowdy Wildcat fans. Williams qualified for the event on June 24th by winning the free throw contest at Coach John Calipari's basketball camp at Pikeville High School. Bryce went on to win the entire contest, and for this achievement, Bryce was awarded an official game ball from UK's 2010 and 2011 Final Four season. Hi, I'm Devin Clevenger. And I'm Austin Burke. And this is your Panther exclusive. On January 11th, your own Devin Clevenger and this guy interviewed Miss Paula Martin students on the experiences they have had so far in the school year. Here are some of the students. All right, so we are here with Brooks Williams. So, what is your favorite part about art class? Making clay. Making clay. Okay, Brooks, have you read The Dot? Yes. Um, do you believe that art can be anything that you want it to be? Yes, it can. So, Brooks, have you made a mistake, and do you believe that if you do make a mistake, that it can be turned into a masterpiece? Yes, it can. So, Brooks, we have some of your art pieces right here. Uh, tell us about some of them. I use this one with paint, this one, that one, this with crayons, mm -hmm. that with crayons. Mm -hmm. So, which one's your favorite? The one that you worked the hardest on. Oh, let's see here. Let's see here. All right. This one right here. Wow, that is very good. What do you call this, Brooks? Sports tree house. Sports tree house. That is amazing. We have an artist on our hands, folks. <laughs> Peyton Ratliff. What is your favorite part about art class? Probably making the pinch pot. Um, so now, have you ever made a mistake while creating a piece of art? I think I have. And how did you fix that mistake? I think I just like thought of something else in it. So, have you read The Dot? Uh, yes. And do you believe that art can be anything you want it to be? Yep. And you have some of your art pieces right here. Um, can you show us some of it? Yeah. This is like, a, I think, a rainbow fish that I made. Mm -hmm. And what's the other ones? This one is, uh, we just had to like do a self-portrait. Mm -hmm. And this one we had to color with crowns and then we had to like get a wet brush and paint it kind of. Mm -hmm. What's this one? This one's uh, the Nutcracker. We went to watch the show. And then we made one. Oh, oh that's so very good. Which one's your favorite? Um, probably this fish. Actually, my pinch spot because I took it home. Oh, your pinch spot. Well, well, thank you for letting us interview you. Kara Miranda Lee. Uh, what is your favorite part about art class? Uh, making art. Making art. That's a very good answer. Um, so have you ever made a mistake in one of your art pieces? Many times. Many times. And how did you fix those mistakes? Set M called a beautiful oops. Beautiful oops. What is that about? When you take a mistake and you turn it into a piece of art. Oh, that's great. So, have you read The Dot? Yes. So, do you believe that art can be anything you want it to be? Mm-hmm. So, we have some of your artwork right here. Can you uh, show us some of it and tell us about it? Uh... This is a collage. What is that collage? A cow. It's a cow? Mm -hmm. And this is a nutcracker. Mm -hmm. Wow. And this is a self-portrait. And this is a, the Green Family. The Green Family. 
So, out of all these, which one would you say is probably your favorite? Oh, and oh. the clay pot. So, which one's your favorite? Uh, either the green family or... I do like the green family. The, or the self-portrait. The self-portrait. Well, well, those are all those, very They're all good. very nice. Very good. Well, thank you for letting us interview So, have you ever read uh, The Beautiful Oops? Yes. Do you enjoy the book? What was the book about? It's about how, like, is this girl makes a um, mess up on her page and she turns it into something good. Have you ever done that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, so all of her artwork is already good. So, have you read The Dot? Yes. And do you believe that art can be anything you want it to be? Yes. And we have some of your artwork right here. Can you tell us about it? This is the cool cat. The cool cat. This is a cool cat. It's because it has all the cool colors on it. Mm. Wow. This is the tree for the tree house. The tree house. <laughs> what else is there? This is my rooster. <laughs> This is my self-portrait. This one's the rainbow fish. And this one's another self-portrait. So which one out of all of these are your favorite? Um, I think it's the pinch pot. Pinch pot. It's been a very popular answer today. I like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, people love that. Well, um, thank you for letting us interview. And you are very good at art, I'll tell you very that. Very artistic. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, Miss Martin teaches creativity, and you can make art from anything. Miss Martin lets the kids express themselves in their own way, and of course, having a lot of fun while doing it. This has been your Panther Exclusive with Devin Clevenger and Austin Burke. Hi, I'm Molly Blackburn here with our teacher feature of the month, Misty Haynes Prater. She's a first grade teacher here at Pipeville Elementary School. Miss Prater, what's your educational background? Uh, I got my bachelor's degree from Pipeville College and then I went on to Moorhead State University to receive my master's degree. How long have you been teaching? This makes my 11th year. What would your favorite subject to teach be? My favorite subject uh, to teach would be math. What's your best moment as a teacher? Uh, in 11 years, uh, during, there's not a year goes by that you don't have some memorable moment, but I would have to say any time that uh, my child or a child leaves the classroom with a smile on their face is a memorable moment. What would your teaching philosophy be? Uh, my philosophy is that every child can learn. Uh, you know, there's, uh, you just have to find out their learning style, what, you know, how they best learn, and then that meets their individual needs. What would, your what would you say your strongest point in teaching is? I would say my relationship that I have with my students. And your pet peeve as a teacher? Uh, my pet peeve is all the changes that keep occurring. There's new national standards in math and reading this year. So it seems like as soon as you get used to teaching it one way, you have to go back and change it. What's your advice for aspiring teachers? My advice for aspiring teachers would be always keep the kids first. Uh, you have to let the kids know that you care about them as individuals uh, and always show them that you care because you may be the only smiling face that a child sees that day. So not only are you a teacher here at Pipeville Elementary, you're also our junior high girls basketball coach. What comments do you have about your past season? Uh, this season was great. Uh, Eric Rose ended up being county champs this year. Uh, we defended, uh, we defeated Dorton, uh, which we haven't done in many, many years. So it was just a great season, and I'm looking forward to next season. Okay, what do you think is going to be, you know, your biggest keys to next season? Uh, my keys next season will be we have our two returning uh, leading scores back, and I'm hoping they'll lead us again and. Uh, looking for great things out of some fifth graders that are moving up that had a lot of playing time this year. So I'm looking to go back to back next year. Well, we all wish you good luck. This has been Teacher Feature with Molly Blackburn and Misty haynes Brader. Thanks for tuning in. This has been Molly Bates and Lucas Taylor with your Panther Power Hour on Pike TV. Be sure to tune in next month to stay updated on your Pikeville Panther news. Beep.